Our next speaker is T.K. Mattingly, who is best known for his participation in mission support for Apollos 8 and 11 and the recovery of Apollo 13 prior to flying as command module pilot in Apollo 16. Currently, he is serving as Lockheed Martin's Vice President for RLV programs. G.K. Madden. Good afternoon. I, uh, I was right. I was taking notes because it's, uh, it, it's fascinating to me. Uh, in, in the aeronautics business, uh, you know, I, I find that watching airplanes uh, be designed and evolved as uh, we grow up, it, it seems amazing that uh, the designs have converged to look so much alike in those cases. Uh, some of the uh, U.S. developed uh, fighter aircraft uh, have a, a large similarity with uh, similar aerodynamic uh, evolutions that uh, have taken place in other parts of the world. Uh, and, and so I think what that tells us is uh, all of us that are working in the problem of physics and how you, how you deal with uh, the, the flight dynamics world have found that we're all dealing with the same sort of set of uh, molecules. So it makes it kind of interesting in this program when you look at the uh, vehicles and you see that starting with the same uh, set of physics uh, that we came out with things that actually look different. And yet, if, if you listen to the Irish story and if you listen to our story, I'm sure the Donald story will tell us all very much the same thing about how we approached it. So we're going to come up with numbers that are very much alike in terms of you know, payload size and we're surveying the markets. We're all looking at, at a certain market. And so we have all gone and, and found uh, probably more grounds that are common than we have for different uh, which is uh, somewhat belied when I take a look at the uh, vehicle. Let me just uh, put this up. Now, this is the thing that we call uh, Venture Star. Uh, we, we selected that name uh, for some probably obvious reasons. Uh, it is a great adventure. It, it is a business proposition, first and foremost, which makes it uh, a venture of the highest magnitude. And, and the star is a tradition of uh, Lockheed's heritage and building airplanes. Uh, the, the vehicle, uh, I'll just point out a, a couple of characteristics. Uh, our choice of the lifting body uh, was driven by two things. All of us are faced with the uh, extreme demands of keeping the mass fraction as low as possible, which is absolutely essential if you're going to make a uh, single stage of the world So that, and you'll see that reflected in mass fraction uh, references to the, to the spacecraft, and you'll see it uh, referenced in the thrust weight of the engine. Uh, we treat them as one and the same. It is an integrated system. Uh, the selection of the uh, lifting body configuration was an attempt to uh, maximize the volumetric efficiency of the launch vehicle. Uh, we, we have, uh, our tanks has the oxygen, has the box tank in front, uh, those uh, the rock holes in the rear. We've got uh, two parallel uh, hydrogen tanks uh, that nestle on either side of the payload bay. Now, this, this picture has been, it's been pointed out to me several times that uh, this one uh, doesn't show a payload bay, and that's, uh, that's because we designed uh, this to be an X-33 and uh, extrapolated it to the venture star. <coughs> and as a matter of fact, the uh, X-33 has a 5-foot by 10-foot uh, payload container, which is used to contain the transportation for the flight so that we get some, some data to anchor our uh, payload environment. Uh, but in fact, uh, these two vehicles are the same, and it's, it's bad form to, uh, to disagree with your customer. Uh, but Bill, uh, our, our goal is not to change our design. Uh, we started with an intense effort on designing the end product. And uh, as Bill pointed out, we, we did in fact derive the X-33 uh, course to demonstrate specific aspects of the, the final product. But in this case, the outer wall line and the uh, configuration were intended to be exactly the same. The other interesting aspect of this, which uh, doesn't show so well in this picture, is at the back end, uh, unlike uh, others, uh, we have an engine that is uh, built by Rocket and I also that's uh, 
derived from a J2 uh, version. Uh, I saw the first of these aerospike engines when we came back uh, on a bottle. They had one out of Kaluka and they showed it to us and said, this is a magic machine that I've been waiting for all these years to see it. And finally, uh, its time has arrived because of its ability to integrate with the structure of the ballistic bike. Uh, the, uh, the aerospike engine, uh, I'm not going to go into giving you a course on how this engine works, but let's just say that if you take the engine bell on the outside and you reverse it, put a spike in the center, and allow the exhaust gases to expand against the atmosphere, one of its virtues in general is that it uh, has a theoretical capability to be the optimal expansion ratios. Uh, in the real world, like uh, most things, uh, you don't achieve the, the theoretical values. But it, it comes very close, and that allows us to have an average ISP to measure the column efficiency, which we believe to be uh, at its maximum. The other aspect of it is that there are seven of these engines that are, instead of being raised in a cluster, they're, they're in a linear array across the back end. And, and so, in order to control this vehicle, we're in ascent to rather than uh, use gimbals and, and concentrate the structural loads of what release to take it and have actuators to move the engines. Uh, we modulate the thrust on the top and the bottom of the spike and the left and the right, and, and then you can get the roll control the same way, so that, uh, we try not to move those around and phase off in, in both the structural integration of the engine as well as controllability. So those are some of the, the, the features of this vehicle. Uh, one of the things that I think is uh, Kind of interesting is
walk on way out of that. How many of you think that uh, this, this notion of space tourism <coughs> is real? You're right. I think it is too. Anybody who's ever looked down at the earth and seen what an absolutely spectacular place it is, to watch the sunset and sunrise, everybody who's ever done it said two things. They said, there's no picture we've ever taken that will portray what a great thing this is, and, and there's no one that can describe it, and you will never tire of looking at it. If I had some money, I would gladly pay it if you could go up there and experience that environment and see it. That's a true statement that's been made by everybody that's ever had the opportunity to experience it. And while it may not be you and me, there are people in this world that today could afford to do it if we had the means. But in reality, all of these dreams we have about doing things are predicated on reducing the cost of access to space to something that's important. There is a threshold, and none of us know what it is, but there is a threshold for access to space to be suppressed. To blow this threshold of cost, it will explode in new markets and new products. Our kids will think about it, and you and I can't. Our generation's <coughs> job is to go provide the tools to let them go and make this explosion happen. So we have an economic need that is really driving things. We have some technological capabilities that have come along that have been <coughs> making things happen in the last decade that we couldn't do before. And the composites is probably one of the most important developments our business ever made. It is my guess that the, the mastery of composites and, and use of structures is going to have the same impact on the laundry of the business that the computers had on going into space and operating their first It is what makes this dream possible. We now know how to build structures and light them up to make single stage possible. We know how to contain cryogenic fluids in those structures with some durability so that you don't have to worry about life cycle closing, life cycle cost implications. And single stage orbit, lest anyone ever forget, if you think about, I'd like to be reliable, I'd like to be low cost. This is one of those cases where the same solution for engines to both. <laughs> you can take good hardware and you reduce the quantities of hardware you have to Without doing anything, you have made your game more alive. Simplicity is always on your side. And so th this idea of getting a single stage for it is right at the heart of both reducing the cost and jacking up reliability so that we can aspire to have everything like operation. And composites are right at the heart of all of that happening. Our ability to do digital design and analysis. I told you that they had done their structural analysis, they ran a test, and the, and the results came in right on the bottom. A few years ago, not too many years ago, that would have been a cause for a tremendous celebration. In fact, you'd have thought we were lucky. That's not the case. State of the art says that's the way we design things today. And that's all due to the digital revolution and what we've learned to do. So those tools have come together give us some advanced technology. The other thing is we've changed our way of thinking. We've talked about airplane-like operations for a long time. What is that? Well, we think of, I ought to go out and put gas in when it lands and, and turn around and go again, and yet we never seem to get there. Well, one of the things is we didn't ever start in the past to design to do that. We have an opportunity now to design it with that thought in mind. One of the keys we have not done in to date in either our expendable communities or in Shanghai. So we haven't isolated the mission from the vehicle. The thing that makes an airplane kind of unique is if I decide to fly to Chicago today and I go to Los Angeles tomorrow, I don't change the airplane. I don't reconfigure it, I don't do anything except change the input. When we launch expendable vehicles, we tailor those little numbers to match the payload. When we do the shuttle, we reconfigure the payload bay as well as tailor the mission. I think all of us have learned a better lesson on that, and 
and when you go after costs, you try to suppress those things by eliminating the ability to meet the status. I noticed that Irish Chart had the containerized payload. Let me tell you that putting the payload into a container where the interface between the launch vehicle and the payload is the standard payload container is going to have the same revolution in space activity that it's had. that 
the technology really is ready for further refinement. We've done a market survey. We have determined what the market is that you can count on today. And remember that while we aspire to reduce the cost of the place where we create new markets, that takes time. And so we have to pay our bills on the predictable market and capturing the market share rather than waiting for one day when the market grows and it's blown up. So we've done our surveys and we've sized our vehicles to make sure that they capture not everything you can do. That will break the bank. One of the things that hurt the shuttle is when we started shuttle, we knew it was going to be around for decades, but we designed it to do three design reference missions which were selected to be demanded so that anything anyone thought of <coughs> in the future, we would be able to accommodate. At the time, it sounded like a wonderful idea. The miraculous thing is the engineers did it. The vehicle is a miraculous flying machine. It does magic things. But because it can do so much magic, it is extremely sophisticated, extremely difficult to keep it operating. So our goal in this is to aim at the market that pays. Aim at the commercial market, what you can develop, and what's here today. So you build a business plan from that. And then out of all that, we came up with this creature we call Venture Star. From Venture Star, we backed into what do you have to demonstrate in order to establish your credibility in phase two. So we have a flight demonstration in this day. And instead of calling it Venture Star for a minute, call it X33. It will demonstrate the integrated aerodynamics and performance of the linear aerospike engine and the lifting body combination. It's going to demonstrate the hypersonic characteristics and our ability to flow this thing a metallic TPS that has a great deal of reusable properties that will make the maintenance are very attractive. Some of that is made possible by the fact that it's a lifting body and the fact that we can do our deceleration on reentry at a higher altitude allows us to keep the thermal profile low, which makes this type of TPS attractive. And so you start with a design that worked its way down until it came up with an economic benefit that drove it. And then you demonstrate it so that you have credibility in phase two. RLB design refinements will take place during this. We have an endpoint, but over the next couple of years, we're going to work on it. And like all markets, they're largely subject to perceptions. And as people perceive this vehicle and its capabilities as coming to fruition, a lot of activities and markets will develop that we don't have. There are going to be changes. It may also turn out, as Bill pointed out, that some of our ideas about how things are going to work and what we'll come up with may change also. The cost of the schedule to build the ultimate vehicle is going to be refined. So we're going to continue to refine this vehicle during phase two to capture the market. There are ground test articles. Uh, all of us have, have some piece of that we're doing. And we're going to refine our business. The goal is that phase three makes our dreams become reality based on the credibility of phase two. Let me just let me share a thought with you on a business strategy. Uh, it's not very elegant, but I, I've talked about the front end cost. Right. Talked about the front end cost and uh, what we're going to do with it. And, and our goal is to first get the cost low enough that we can operate uh, in space and capture the market in sufficient volume to quickly pay off our bill. Once that debt is retired, the next goal is to go back in and then suppress the cost and bring out these new markets that we promised. Just a, I'm not going to explain this chart, but let me just point out to you that every one of these boxes in here is a cost item. And just for reference, if you had a billion dollars you spent in development and you amortized it over a vehicle that flew 10 times a year for 10 years, you're going to put about $20 million on the price tag each long. That's just to retire the debt. That is the fundamental problem. So 
So you have a, a development cost, you have a construction cost, you have the cost to own it, which is all the maintenance, and you have the cost to fly. We often confuse the cost to fly as what it, the price is. Our, we have to add up all of these to make a profit and still have the price come out to something that is below what the what our competition will sell for. That means that the basis for this program is business engineering, a model of the entire business that will be refined as we go through. Finding the characteristics and features that the customers need, and at which we learn the hard way how to attract customers and how to bring them on board, and that the features that you have, the availability, the flexibility, and the rapid response will allow you to charge premium. So you have to emphasize those. In phase two, we're going to capture the cost of building our X-33 and ground test vehicles, and that will be the basis for the credibility of our cost of schedule estimates for phase three, which influences our financing alternatives and our government enabling legislation if necessary. All of that put through in the business room. So in conclusion, uh, what I'd like to tell you is Adventure Star is the most exciting game in town. It is out of the box in the way we approach it. It is going to bring us things that are out of the world, and it's going to bring it down to earth by being something we can afford. For the first time, this part of our industry is being challenged to take a business problem and solve it in an innovative technology.